Well, welcome to Leaders Live, folks. Short countdown timer to help the various feeds catch up, settle down and all that jazz. And we can't wait for today's show, folks. We can't wait. Today we have a doctor in the house. Yay! We're hanging out with neuroscientists and my mate, Dr. Ian Price, and, and another regular guest and Leaders Live contributor. In fact, the very first person on Leaders Live was our Ian. So there we go. <clears throat> so feed's just come up, so that's great news. Just waiting for that to come up. Uh, we'll be chatting about tell imposter syndrome to beep right off. You can feel the beep in yourself, folks, I'm sure. So hi, Ian. Give us a wave. Give us a quick hello. Hey, good to be with you. I Brilliant. love this music. It's very... I just found the... Yeah, this really gets me... Yeah. Chill. Yeah, it's um, music by my Uncle Peter. There you go. So <laughs> good old Uncle Peter. And um, cool. we've got Birdine um, Hugo, our fab moderator, chipping in. She'll keep the interaction flowing, keep us on the straight and narrow. So a boona, Birdine. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. Um, I'm glad to have Ian back in the room because the first time I wasn't part of this. And yeah. I can be part of this now. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. So... 54th Leaders Live show, folks, fantastic. We've all been part of this growing community that feels really exciting. So let us know if our audio is coming through okay as well, folks. So, oi, oi, people, sour booner, it's Leaders Live showtime, folks, yay. And it's just after 8.45 a.m. here in the UK. So uh, if you're new to Leaders Live and you don't know me, I'm Andrew Jenkins, and we are live, live, live with Leaders Live, spreading the love, folks, spreading the love, yabba dabba do. And we're streaming out on LinkedIn, we're streaming out on YouTube, we're streaming out on Facebook, Facebook group or two, Twitter and Twitch as well. <laughs> and if you can't catch us live or on the replay, fear not, my friends, we have you covered because we go out on podcasts too. So there you go. Ooh. So morning, Jonas. Morning, Laurie. Morning, Maria. Fantastic. They're all joining in. Fantastic. Uh, it's great to see you all. And um, how and where do we find Uncle Peter's music? Well, that's copyright to me, but I'm sure I could uh, make it available to you as well. So remember too, folks, this is an interactive show, folks. So please get involved and join in. Ask questions, network with a live community and even a little friendly banter, etc. You know how it goes. So put it all together and what have you got? Yeah, you've got it. Bibbity bobbity boo. <laughs> I just love that expression. You guys will be singing that all day now for so uh, let's just quickly bring up the uh, the Ian just for a quick minute. So ah, there's hey. my mate. So yeah, ah, okay. So as already mentioned, we're hanging out with my mate, Doctor Ian Price, another How's regular it? guest, leaders' life contributor. How are you doing to today, Ian? I'm really, I, you know, brilliant. I love your energy. It always <laughs> picks me up. You and Berdine, when you, when I'm listening to this, when I'm, this is great to be again on the other side, right? Because. The first person to do it. And I remember when we started, I was like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, were, you came in on the side, didn't you? That was funny. Yeah. Yeah. We had so, to get used know, to the technology. <laughs> look at this. So it's amazing. So, yeah, no, really looking forward to talking today with you about and with everybody that's listening about this thing called imposter syndrome. Because imposter it's something syndrome. that, yeah, yeah, because it's like something that I think, well, I know, in fact, having worked with lots of people, that there's something that affects them and it affects me. The irony is, I'm just going to put this out there. I feel like an imposter coming from this. <laughs> we'll find you out, Ian. We'll find you out. So yeah. that's where we're heading today. So let's have a quick... Ah. ah. <laughs> yeah, and a quick... Whoa. There we are. So, um, Ian, you've got a question for us, unless you want me to say the question. So yeah, get no, us I... going with an interaction, Ian. Yeah, I can. I can. Okay, so this is the thing, right? the imposter syndrome, whatever that means to you, I'm interested in thinking, okay, um, how often do you feel that? Yeah. So, I mean, we're going to go through this, what, what it actually means, what other people think it is, what where that's coming from in the brain. Is that useful? Can it be useful? Uh, is it not? All that sort of stuff. But the interesting thing, I'd like you just to think about this. Do you feel like an imposter? And and if you do, you know, I would like you to put, you know, um, it's depending on how much you feel it, right? So I would like on a scale of one to 10, basically. Spot on. Do you feel like, you know, one... I rarely ever feel it. In fact, zero. Okay, let's say zero. Zero, I never feel like an imposter, never feel like a fake, never feel like a fraud, then it's a zero. And if you feel that actually maybe on the scale, you know, sometimes a little bit, maybe it's a two or a three, maybe, you know, every other, every now and then, maybe it's a five or six. And as you get towards sort of seven, eight, nine, and even dare I say 10, you know, <laughs> honestly, 
all the time. All okay, the time. so, so kick us off then, Ian. Where are you today then on this scale? Come on. <laughs> I, at the moment, that's a really... Do you know what? I think probably a healthy six. A healthy six. Five. There you go. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll come on to the reason why that is later. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you know you know what to do, folks. So kick us off with where you are on a scale of one to ten or naught to ten. Um, naught being... Um, Never. Uh, Never and 10 being all the time. I don't know if the question's right for that, but the scale's the right way around. So, um, Laurie Hells, morning. Uh, really looking forward to this one. Yeah, Maria Jeffers, morning. Jonas, how and where do we find Uncle Peter's music? <laughs> Jack Wright, morning, Jack. Lovely people. Yeah, good morning to you too. Good morning, Steve Whittle, uh, Linda Stevens, um, Victoria, um, yeah, and Spencer. Yeah, caught you on. Um, beep right off. Yeah, I thought that would get a few people. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> That's a catchy title, isn't it? We did wonder about whether we could get away with that, but apparently yeah. we can. So uh, joining in from Windy Cold Strand, Cape Town, Justin Manns, welcome. Paul Winfield, good morning. Looking forward to this. Join us again. Um, yeah, calling it a syndrome medicalises it. We were talking about that earlier. We're going to come straight to that, Linda. And uh, yeah. Uh, not feeling good enough. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, five, says Maria. Right. We'll come on to that in a minute. So, OK, so I'm going to come back to you in just a tick, Ian. Um, so uh, where are we? As mentioned uh, in Leaders Leaders Live is an interactive show. So please join in, folks. Don't be shy. Use the comments for these questions and to engage with us during the show and each other. Remember, it's a group conversation. You know how it goes. And um, let's return back to our mod scene here as well. So, chance for you to say a little bit more. We briefly introduced Birdine during the countdown, sporting our fantastic Leaders Live hoodie, by the way. Whoop, whoop. Yes. Yeah. From the lovely Western Cape. So, whether you live in the UK or the Western Cape, we've got you covered. So, South Africa, it's called Ghetto Hiri. UK, you guys are getting some heat now. Not that that's heat for me, but in any case, you can get the T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. Now, we've got to qualify cold, Birdie, because cold for you is 18 degrees, right? Now, that would be positively yes. warm for us. <laughs> there we go. That's tropical. <laughs> <It's actually> <laughs> tropical. <laughs> tropical, great. Okay, so... Yeah. Thank you, Birdine. So, um, yeah, just a quick one on, look, smash those likes, folks, and those thumbs up as we're going around. So really appreciate that. Keeps us motivated as we're going along. So laka laka, and please subscribe to our Leaders Live YouTube community channel. It's a group effort. We're trying to grow that at the moment, so we need your help for that. So please do that as well, please. We're trying to get to that magic 100. I know it doesn't seem a big number, but it is to us. So please subscribe, and the link will be in the chat very shortly. So back to um, Ian again. So there we go. So Ian, let us just, before you begin, let's just give you a round of applause. Woo! That, um, for those of you on podcast, we've got confetti just pouring down the screen right now for, for Ian. It so, doesn't happen a lot, so I'm just enjoying that. <laughs> feel the love, Ian. Feel the love. I hope you enjoyed the groovy build-up, hey? Oh, I am. I'm now, even, now my imposter's definitely got up the scale. I think it's like, am I worth that? And well, there's a seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's really tweaked it, hasn't it? Your imposter syndrome. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. So before we begin on the questions, let's just quickly go to yeah. what's going on in the chat. Birdie, what's going on in the chat? Okay, so we've got a few on our live chat coming through but some of them aren't coming through so i'm just going off linkedin real quick yeah um we said that maria said a five laurie said depends on the situation in my new company when someone views me as an expert scale 10. oh yeah uh linda said two paul said often five but sometimes 10. Elaine said to Jack said to Steve Whittle, 10 daily. I always believe whoever I'm talking to believes I'm full of <laughs> s I wonder what that is. Just finish that whole thing. Yeah. Carrie said yeah. five. Justin Mann said, depending on negative vibes, wanting to suck my positivity. Yeah. And then Jonas said, quick question from the beginning. Is imposter syndrome a thing because it has a name? And is it more pronounced because it has a name? The more I learned about exoskeletons, the more I felt like an imposter when I talked about it. I thought all other must know as much as me. 
Yeah, that's an interesting um, burden. Yeah, we were talking, weren't we, beforehand? That the word syndrome makes it a syndrome, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so that, it's got I, that's, the negative connotation. Absolutely. Yeah. What a fantastic question. Yeah. What a fantastic question. I was actually thinking about this a, a, a bit earlier today, funny enough, because I was thinking, well, you know, we've come across imposter syndrome. It was coined back in the 70s after yeah. some work by Pauline and Clance and Suzanne Imes. And it was really looking at, you know, the idea that so why was it that successful women in particular going into college in the States in the 70s felt like they didn't deserve to be there? And it really then grew from that and that was really that was really coined at the time imposter phen- phenomenon oh, i think it's an absolute great point because actually the fact that we've named it doesn't mean that we start to see it now the brain is very very context specific and if, also if you give it something to latch on to so like a name you'll actually start to sort of see that you're like and literally and there's a part of the brain called the reticular activating system which is very much about seeing the things that are important or might be a threat to you yeah. and and so again an absolute great question i think the fact that we are aware of it and we give it a name therefore that we start to see it in other places and that's part of the problem here with the brain because i think it was way back when the first session we said you know your brain can be your best friend or it can be your worst yeah enemy. exactly i love that your brain can be your best friend folks or your worst enemy and when we start to think about imposter syndrome and because we know about it it becomes a thing right in our heads isn't that? it's incredible and then we it? worry about it and where does our focus go andrew it goes on to the problem yeah and the more it goes on to the problem the more it, it realizes that so we yeah. disappear down the rabbit hole rather than just... going up up the rabbit hole so to speak so that's absolutely one of the key things about the way the brain is trying to work and it's it's not i would say all the way through this imposterism isn't necessarily something that is separate it's kind of normal with the way the brain works mm. it's just an exaggeration and maybe it's about focus and it's also about an instruction isn't it Ian? you know we're giving it an instruction when we talk about imposter syndrome i wonder whether i'm going to feel an imposter syndrome here we're immediately giving ourselves permission to be that person um, one thing that you talk a lot Absolutely. about is don't think about the pink elephant, right? Yeah. So this is the thing about <laughs> not focusing on something, right? So if I said to you, don't, <laughs> don't, focus don't on it. think of a pink elephant and just wait a couple of seconds. Right. Most people, I suspect most people, <laughs> the pink elephants just popped into your head. And this is the part of the problem with imposter syndrome yeah. or imposterism, which I like, which I actually prefer because I, I don't like the term syndrome because it isn't actually a technically a syndrome, really. Yeah. It's not got any etiology. So it's got no sort of real cause other than it's a normal function of how the brain works. And there's no real treatment for it. So ah, I actually feel, interesting. Well, so, I was going to come on to yeah. that. So, um, you know, yeah. Not, not, not in terms of pharmaceutically, at least. Oh right, okay. Um, so, so that's why it's not real, and it, and also it's very transient. It's not like other syndromes. Transient. Most of the syndromes, that. yeah, it's a trans. It's, it's, you know, it's short lived. Yeah. So it it could be very short lived, and uh, fantastic comments about you know, sometimes it's I'm a five, and sometimes I'm a ten, for instance, and I appreciate mm. that some someone's a, a ten, but oh, most of the time, and let's let's go there at some point over the course of this conversation. But you know, the thing is, the brain is very context specific. So it's a little part of the brain called, well, I said little part, it's quite an important part, <laughs> called the hippocampus, which is part of the limbic oh, brain, which yes. is that sort of, sort of sort of emotional brain. And it's yeah. as soon as you get into a certain context, it says, right, okay, now now I recognize this, this is what we need to do. Uh, so it's the hippocampus fetch out and the, the past history. Exactly. Right. And that, and that again is habitual. So one of the things that we, which I might be racing ahead here, <laughs> but it's about habits. It's about the habitual thinking that we have yeah. and the lies of which our brain is constantly telling us. Uh, right. I'm going to pause you there, Ian. Um, quick one on a definition here, just so we can catch up. Then we're going to go to the comments mm. in a minute. So what is the definition? The persistent inability to believe in one success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own efforts or skills. People suffering from imposter syndrome may be at an increased risk of anxiety. Ooh. Yeah. And we'll come on to the confidence piece in a minute. So just before we do that... Um, Can I just uh, uh, highlight two key words there? Yeah. Persistent. And what was that? Can you put the card... Yeah, I could go back. Yep, yeah, no problem. Yeah, and I think <clears throat> the other part is legitimate legitimate legitimacy and persistency there we go there's two new words for us big words okay so Ian we'll just give you a quick break for now but what's going on in the chat let's catch us up there's tons going on what's going on 
Yes, so Maria said, I'm delivering a webinar next week and the negative thoughts are creeping in. I'm uh -huh. fighting them. I will be good enough. You will yes, be Maria, good enough. Yes, Maria, you get butterflies yeah, every single time, butterflies, and then you get started and you just go with it and you yeah. will be great. You will yeah. be great. And there's something so, about confidence there as well, isn't it? We're going to come back onto that in a while. Yes. The confidence piece, Maria, keep up with that. But we're all going to be um, we're all going to be joining into your conference. I saw it on LinkedIn the other day, so I'll accept that invite. Thank you, Maria. Can I give can I give <laughs> yeah, you a little bit there? It. Focus on the on the outcome, the solution. Yeah. Again, so again, Andrew's a master NLP practitioner. He'll know this entirely. Um, I know Berdine will know this as well, having worked with so many of us before. So it's that visualization practice and accept that actually to a certain extent the nerves and not feeling like you're ready is a part all part of it yeah we're never ready all right we're never it. ready yeah that's a star wars quote we're never ready <laughs> okay but that focus again where the attention goes the energy flows so yeah is it, uh, what what are the outcomes that you're after from a coaching perspective i'll be saying this with clients what's the outcomes you're after okay focusing on those what are those going to be and and that's that's where you put your attention. So where and the when attention brain, goes, the energy flows in. Is that absolutely, right? Absolutely. Perfect. Literally. And the thing that I would yes. say is there's going to be a little itch that goes, no, 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 but you're not good enough. <laughs> you're not, not, not good enough. You've got to think about this. You've got to think yeah, about this. And that's yeah. your brain just trying to nag you. Yeah. To, uh, and again, we'll come on to why. Nag, 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 nag. But there focus on the positive rather than the nag. There are, yeah. Okay. So, Ferdine, thank you, Ian. <laughs> Ferdine. Uh, Cecile said, good morning, everyone. Welcome, morning, Cecile. Cecile. Yeah, morning, Cecile. And Jack is just giving Maria a bit of positive talk there. Yeah, Keep up good lad, Jack. Talk. Yes, Jana said, follow-up question. Oh, God. Do you well, think yeah. that imposter syndrome is affecting more people today because oh, of the negativity of the online world? It's more than that as well, Ian. Come on, let's answer that now. Yeah. Honestly, <clears> it's <throat> one of the things I think – you know, last couple of years in particular, absolutely. So the prevalence has been sort of, there was a really amazing paper that looked at all sorts of studies on imposter syndrome, imposterism or imposter phenomenon yeah. and saying about, you know, actually depending on the results, you know, up to 90% of the population in 2019 Whoa. felt imposter syndrome or imposterism at some point in their life. Now I, I'm really, and I know there's a 10% and we've done our own poll and there's some people that say they'd never do, but I think it's more like Mark Twain's quote about public speaking. There are two types of public speaker, those that get nervous, Maria, I hope that's helpful for you. And, and the second lot are those that are lying. <laughs> what well, lines of themselves yeah because yeah. actually that's what our brain is doing all the time to us. There's yeah. over 180 different types of sort of concepts or biases that our brain works on at least. Wow. that we know of and that again those are sort of lying so honestly i think one of the things that we're seeing is definitely a high prevalence of imposterism i think particularly after the last couple of years yeah. i think there's a couple of other things that are going on yeah. as well so a lot of research around women in leadership again that's traditionally women have had imposter thoughts more than men and actually ethnic minorities so as you go through an organization, when we work with organizations, one of the things that I find is, you know, actually me and my associates, we find that actually that people f that have an ethnic minority of some sort feel like there's no other sort of role model that they've got. So they yeah. suddenly think, well, it must, it must be me. It must be wrong. And again, that's the spiral. The spiral Downwards. Begins. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. So, and the, the last part of this is that uh, we know that imposterism is, is a co we call it comorbidity. So the idea is oh, it's often word. linked to, yeah, but posh word, which is coming out of that uh, quote with, uh, about, you know, what imposterism is and, you know, the, sort of where, where it's coming from. And actually what we say is that so often imposterism is related to anxiety and depression. So one yeah. of the things I'm saying with leaders is, look, if you see imposterism, maybe you can look at the types of imposter that you might have in your teams be aware that could be a marker for anxiety and depression and we know that anxiety and depression is not necessarily it's not, it's not great for the well-being and it's not good for productivity yeah productivity and well-being yeah okay yeah, it's just not thanks ian right yeah birding carry on okay then linda asked how do leaders recognize it and uh, imposter syndrome and what should they do about it Linda, That's you've read you our questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to answer that one. Go for it, Ian. <laughs> well done. Well, 
Absolutely, hi Linda. Big shout out. Linda's one of my uh, one of the associates I work with in so many different contexts. So oh, Linda, I thought she was I, a mate of yours. Yeah. yeah, she's amazing, amazing Linda. So <laughs> there are different personality types, if you like, or archetypes of imposterism. So the ones that I, which have come, I, these are not mine. These have come from work by a lady called Valerie Young, a fantastic book that she wrote, which was Secret Thoughts of Successful Women, um, which I thought was was a fantastic oh, title. Great title. And, and so there are different types of imposterism or imposterism can show up in different ways. So there's the perfectionist. That's the person that really feels like, you know, absolutely everything has to be just so, you know, they're pernickety. They're the ones that often, you know, well, they they're micromanage people, you know, it mm. just has to be, I have to have enough evidence. There's the, the superheroes. Those tend to be the people that self-sacrifice. They go over and above. They're always the one that's helping other people because they're not good enough. So they project that and to actually, I need to be able to earn my right almost to be, to be of use can sometimes be people that are often after, constant reaffirmation about who you know the work that they're doing or who they are mm -hmm. you then have the natural genius the natural genius is the one that feels that actually you need to know everything from the start so if how would you recognize it as a leader well actually if somebody's just not interested in in learning anything they don't want to go on cpd they don't they see that as a weakness because they should should know it instantly and i think it's amazing actually it's an amazing lie that that brain is telling that person yeah. because the reality is that do we get to 18 or 16 and that's where learning stops yeah. and then you've got and then you've got the soloist so the soloist is the one that wants to do everything by themselves mm -hmm. has autonomy you know they just want to do, they'll just go off in a certain direction uh, leaders nightmare in some ways but those can be <laughs> but they also can be a fantastic person to have in a team because mm -hmm. you know you want to spearhead something you give a soloist a, uh, some space as long as there is obviously there's caveats and sort of other people around them knows what they're doing that kind of thing and support absolutely fantastic but there can be obviously downsides with the soloists because they tend to be isolated and it can mean that that whole kind of spiral is much easier to get into because they haven't got a way of sort of checking the sort of perspective with other yeah. people and the last one is the expert so the expert is the one that serially collects <laughs> qualifications linda <laughs> <laughs> yeah linda <laughs> Look, looking at how nobody and but i say that because she'll say right back at you ian so I know I say this, yeah um, ian absolutely yeah. phd mister well exactly yeah and then carries on. so so yeah. the thing the thing is with with that is that there are people in your organization that will just say, well, if I can just do this CPD, if I could just do this uh, extra qualification, yeah. and maybe that's you too, you know, I, if I could just get that, that bit of paper and usually we know that that itch doesn't actually ever go away. Yeah. So again, these are kind of, what I would say is that there are different sort of behaviors that you can sort of see around those five different archetypes, which, you know, if you're starting to see that in yourself or in your teams, there's a good chance imposterism is going on for them. And therefore, also potentially at the moment, well, particularly at the moment, the whole thing about sort of depression and anxiety. And yeah. it's not the best place to be. There you go. Linda says right back at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's, thank you for that. Not a great place to be. Let's just stop you there and give you a bit of a breather. Birding, catch us up on the chat. We've got tons going on. Yes, we do. Steve Whittle said, I was given the opportunity to do a job that I wasn't qualified for and mm. had no experience in. Corporate events planner, even though I've been doing the role for four years, I still believe people doubt me. Yeah, it's interesting, and that isn't happens. it? Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, Maria just said, thanks. And Ian, she said, thanks. Yes, we'll stick to what art, um, I'm after. So, oh yeah there you go Maria's yeah well done have yeah. positive thinking going <laughs> yeah get that outcome going our brains love direction you know and we give them crap direction yes. they'll go in crap ways so yeah exactly. crap being a technical yes. term by the way folks <laughs> <laughs> Ela elaine said equal amounts of fear and excitement are a good <clears throat> recipe for success that's true very yeah good. yeah yeah good equal amounts very good point we're going to come back onto that fear and excitement hold mm. on to that thought there good recipe for success yeah we're going to come back to that elaine uh, good morning yes. elaine yeah hi elaine russell <laughs> anderson said been running a design agency for 10 years now set it up and started from nothing and now i have a small team and a great client list i still feel imposter syndrome when it comes to being a leader and manager because i never wanted to be the world's best boss any advice or mantras i can repeat to myself oh, will it ever go away yeah. <laughs> don't hit the ball in the water russell <laughs> 
Classic. Guess what happened? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fantastic one, Russell. Um, I, the, the, the key thing is what do you want? Yeah. Or who do you want to be? And then again, you know, in terms of let's Spot have on. that as the focus. So you never you said I've never wanted to be a boss or the world's best boss. Well, who who or what did you want to be? Yeah. And then focusing on that as well. But yeah, again, we do, one of the, we do tend to focus, don't we, in on what we don't want, you know, and a key prospect in NLP or a key driver in NLP is what do you want and aim for that. Not what you don't want, what you what you want. Sorry and carry on. No, no, it's exactly that. And you know, often mm. when you know clients come to us, it's all about okay, um I don't want this to happen. I don't want that to happen. And I feel this and I fear that. And rather than, and again, we're not dismissing that at all, not for, mm. not for a second. But what we are saying is, look, just be really careful where, where the attention is going. Yeah. So again, the more we can incrementally, and by the way, this takes a bit of practice. So, you know, James Clear has written a fantastic book called Atomic Habits, which I know you know about. Oh, and Atomic Habits, yeah. It's a fantastic book about how you habitually change your thinking and behavior. And this has to come incrementally. So it doesn't just like, oh, you know, just like that. It's because the brain needs to rewire itself, literally, physically. Yeah. So what's going to happen is that incrementally it's sort of shifting. And I, I, I talk about this with clients. It's a bit like, you know, um, a super tanker, you know. Ultimately, if that's the way your brain's been thinking for so long, it's going to have a lot of momentum. But incrementally, with a little bit of a steerage from a very small rudder, yeah. you can start to turn that tanker around for you. Yeah. So I think that that would be something I'd look at. And, and, um, and the hard yeah. thing there, Ian, is a bit like a plant growing, isn't it? I want this plant to grow. I want this plant to grow. I want this. this isn't working. And therefore, the universe says, your wish is my command, takes, takes it away, right? So and, you've got to keep going that, until that tank that turns. Unfortunate, absolutely. Unfortunately, mm. that's, again, one thing that happens. Oh, it's just not working. Therefore, I should just check it in. Again, <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally. And unfortunately, even for some people, sadly, that is, that's their lives, literally. Yeah. And, yeah. and and it's very sad when, when you is. hear that because often it's a, it's a <clears throat> lie that the brain has fed itself. Don't I'm, I'm always astonished that we can tell our brains, using our brains, to tell it to do something else. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're almost having a chat with your own brain. Or say it but doesn't yeah, work can... and then dismiss it straight away. So yeah, it needs it needs to gather its evidence and that you need to get rid of the residual stuff, right? That's it. Yeah. Because we will believe <clears throat> that we believe the stories we tell our brains. Oh and there's a key, folks. You know, what are the story we're telling our brains? And if we're telling it's an imposter thing, me Bob, then that's what we get, right? Bibbity bobbity boo. <sighs> Yeah. Okay, Bertine, back to you again. Okay. Um, just quick first, Krishna asks if this session is recorded. It yes. is recorded and it will be available on YouTube, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, everywhere. So yeah, YouTube. Krishna, don't worry. We've yeah. got you, you covered. <laughs> <laughs> Krishna, we got you covered. The podcast yeah. comes out 48 hours time or 24 to 48 hours time. Yes. But we'll make it available in the group. Join the group um chris uh, krishna yes. and then you'll get copies of it quickly okay yes elaine said regarding health and well-being imposterism can lead to serious illness way beyond anxiety oh, yeah. when we are not being our authentic selves the mismatch builds and serious illness creeps upon us yeah now elaine she's a superstar with disc and she's got she's taken it to a new a, a new zone which is about um looking at personality styles and our mental health right elaine so we're going to grab you on the show at some point and talk about that so well said mm. brilliant any thoughts for you ian on that one yeah can you just pop it up again yeah well, just, there it is i got i'm very visual and i, I use disc as well so i was kind of like oh Ooh, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> interesting. Oh, there's thought. a fellow and i'm thinking elaine we should have a chat because yeah. i'm very interested about uh, that so absolutely i think the key thing is that with beyond anxiety is that as soon as as soon as and i honestly i've had anxiety depression myself i really know how painful it is yeah and um absolutely again the, the issue is when that gets you just feed that and feed that and feed that and what i when i myself and when i've spoken with clients about this i it's something that a friend who helped people with suicide actually was sort of saying the problem is when you get to this point it's like you know that sort of funnel that you sort of see as imagine the cross section of a black hole and as you go down and down and down and down and down it's harder and harder to see out and so you only see it, and yeah. if you can only see up and actually if you're so far down it feels like it's dark anyway yeah. and that's then that's again part of the perspective problem so mm -hmm. even when other people are outside of that trumpet shape if you like mm -hmm. and can sort of see down into the hole and go actually it's not as bad as you think it is it's just a small leap up and a you know a bit of a climb up you'll be fine actually for that person it they just can't see it and yeah. the, and, and again yeah. the brain will gather the more and more evidence that that is not the case and therefore yeah. and now it's stuck QED. 
So again, this is the, the key thing I would say is if that is something or you see somebody in that situation, really the therapy, so counseling and coaching is not counseling. A lot of what I do can, can scope close to therapy, I must admit, yeah. but it's usually in, in the, in the service of going forwards. Absolutely. So that, Spot on. And I think, and I think that the perspective thing is important here as well, because ultimately one of the best ways of countering imposterism is what other evidence are, is there. So again, you know, that I'm not a good speaker, or I shouldn't be the world's best boss or all of that sort of thing and thinking, okay, well, where is that evidence coming from? Yeah. Who do I know and trust that can help? And that's important. Who do I know and trust that would give me feedback that I am, and again, more the positive things and would tell me if that wasn't the case, because again, that's going to help just, you know, sort level of you. Uh, calm down. You're exactly level yeah. That's a great way of putting it. Beautiful. Andrew, and I way. like that because you're looking from an external validation as well, because if you can't find it internally, then find it externally, folks. And some of us are more motivated to seek internal validation and others are more externally validated. But both are important and they're different perspectives, right? Absolutely. So Elaine, Fantastic. going back to you, external validation obviously is going to come for your eyes, your influencers and spirals, or if you like, you know, um, insights is going to be a yellow energy. Yeah. Whereas that internal validation is likely to come particularly for S's so or greens or blue C's, conscientious, consistent, or sensitive, stable sort of people. So, you know, it's really interesting. And then D's are interesting one in themselves. So those direct dominant kind of styles, yeah. um, again, I, and I don't think Linda would mind. I hope Linda doesn't mind, but I know Linda's, you know, Cobalt Red is, is the name of a company and there's a, for a reason for that. <laughs> Brilliant. So, okay. so how, how do you get that is important and recognizing yeah. who you are. This is all a journey of self-discovery. It really is, isn't it? A journey of self-discovery. And just on that note, Ian, we'll just you know, give you a break to get your glass of water in there. Birdine, over to you. There's <laughs> squintillions going on in the chat. Uh Yes, Steve Whittle said, I think I'm a superhero. I need an ontological massage. <laughs> <laughs> superhero, yeah, yeah. I'm either solo lone pilot or superhero. <laughs> yeah, like that. Okay. So, Steve, rescue yourself. Rescue yeah. yourself, is what I'll say, if you rescue can. Rescue yourself. There you go. Brilliant. <laughs> Birdine. So, Steele said, thanks, Ian. I believe working on our imposter syndrome is like having a healthy living diet. Ooh. Training our brain to meditate or be mindful. Oh, Cecilia, so on it. Yeah. Spot on. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Uh, Joe arrived a little late. Hi, Hi Joe. Joe. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but would my imposter be, as I work from home full time, I have the feeling I need to prove myself more. Oh. Yeah. yeah, we put ourselves under so much pressure, don't we? When we think, you know, well, we're having a good time at home, therefore I have to do even more to prove myself. Oh, yeah, I get that. I think yes. we've all done that being home working. And yeah. again, mm. but what we've yeah, lost is our perspective, right? We've lost yeah. perspective and connection mm. with other people. So I would just say on that point, who could you help get you, give you that sort of perspective and talk through what it is you actually want? Because the other thing that we do, we have all sorts of assumptions. We do, we assume that we know what we want. Going back to your question, Andrew, you know, why mm. it's such a powerful question is what do you want? It's because we rarely, really ask it of ourselves. No, we don't, because we find it hard to do. Yeah, great. Okay, yeah. Birdie, what else? Okay. Uh, Linda said, think we should add courage into the mix. What oh, is the yes. worst that could happen? And oh, it really does yeah. manifest. Yeah, because we go, what if it goes all wrong? What if the imposter syndrome comes out? What if I fail again? Yes. What if it goes right? What if the world on, was going to give me, you know, not a curveball, but, you know, something of interest to me, you know, a present, a gift? Yeah, and this is the, and then, and then I would say that absolutely, Linda, and this is the difference between yeah. having sort of a fixed mindset or an, a, a mindset of abundance. Spot on. Yeah. You know, if, if what's the worst that could happen, and actually – usually when we articulate that it's not it's actually not that bad or yeah you know again the likelihood if we can you know again sort of work out okay if that does happen okay but what are the things the that worst? we're going to learn from yeah. that yeah. because because again that particularly for a perfectionist can be and particularly for the natural genius can be really tricky learn because actually failure. because we learn from failure which is mm. growth mindset but people yeah. often with imposter syndrome or imposterism particularly if you're sort of the natural genius, then you're going to be counter <laughs> growth genius. mindset. You're going to be fixed, fixed mindset because yeah. everything is either talented or not. Right. Yeah, so right. absolutely spot on Linda. Spot on. Great. Thanks. Birdie. <laughs> hey, Elaine said I'm running another retreat later this year for Ooh. women in business. And this discussion has given me some ideas. Thank you. 
Brilliant. Thank yeah, you. glad to help. And, you know, shout out your event <laughs> as well for us when that comes yes. up. We'll, yeah. Uh, Russell said, appreciate that, guys. Atomic Habits audiobook is locked and <laughs> Locked and loaded, loaded yeah. Um, actually, Russell, if you've got the link, pop it in the chat for us if you can do that, if it's easy for you. If you're on mm. a mobile, it might be slightly harder. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, my, my daughter's read it, so um, it's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, okay, Russell and Jack is having their conversation. Their poll said, does this tie into the Peter Principle? Oh, the Peter or the Martin principle, I've heard it as. Is that right? What is the Peter principle? I don't know the Peter principle. I don't, or at least I don't know by that name. It's called lots of different things, I think. But um, yeah, if you can give us a steer on that, Paul, we can. Um, what do you mean by the Peter principle? We'll come back to you, mate. Thanks, Paul. Okay. Cecile said, when our brain has been trained and educated, it tends to follow one direction. But it has the power to work around or change direction. There are yeah. techniques like therapy or hypnotherapy. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a I'm a practicing hypnotherapist as well, um, and um, yeah, I run a private practice in that. And it's amazing how hypnotherapy can help to change that direction, really nicely, actually, very elegantly. Yes. Mm, nice one. Once again, it's that it's that. I'd love that. It's rewiring absolutely yeah. has capacity. There are different mm. ways in which we can do that. And again, there's the how do we get out of our own way? And I think yeah. that's, again, I'm, I'm defer to your expertise there in terms of hypnotherapy, Andrew and Cecile. Mm. But for me, it's about uh, the, the way in which we can intentionally look at stuff and then choose the things that we actually want yeah. and, and therefore focus on those rather than focusing on the things that we don't want. But the key thing is getting out of our own way and then allowing the connections to happen that we want to and some more creative and again there's so many different ways we can do that as well but yeah. when we're when we're in this is i think a key point here as well if when we're in an imposterism type mode whatever the archetype that we have and again it doesn't mean you have to have one by the way there could be a mix of those then we're likely to be in a more threat activated way and, and threat activation for the brain is that fight flight yeah, freeze yeah. or flock exactly yeah. so cortisol stress none of these things are good for your body none of them is good for your health generally don't very good for other people mm. around you either mm. or the relationships so suddenly all sorts of other things start happening that feeds the brain going oh actually think something's wrong the imposterism is there to by the way to keep you safe that's the brain's natural tendency to say look let's just are you sure you could because again you know that you could die doing this is kind of what the brain's trying to say so when you're in that threat activated state again the blood the blood flow and oxygenation going to the prefrontal cortex which is our real kind of thinking creative part of our brain is limited yeah. so we're so we're not opening up again going back to what um, cecile was saying you know about you know actually if we're in that sort of state we're not open to the kind of creative thinking that we could have yeah you know what Ian and and you folks listening I, I I teach on this and I call it the difference between the upstairs brain and the downstairs part of the brain and the downstairs part of the brain is all fight flight you know um, freeze um, fear driven cortisol driven and the key is that when we're down there we lose access the staircase isn't completely visible to us or, or accessible to us when we're in the downstairs part of our brain to get to the upstairs part of our brain so we need that choice point to move from downstairs to upstairs and but once we go upstairs and we do the what if scenario as linda said earlier then we can we then we can depart from the downstairs part of our brain move much more to those big thinking circuits love that and victoria here says um this is a big one here do you want to pick this one up birdeen Yes, uh, Victoria said, 14 years today, I lost my first husband, so I feel imposter syndrome today. Mm. I always felt I stood in the shadow of a great man and was never allowed to shine my own light. That's why your title, F right or caught my eye. Yeah. Thanks for your honesty there, Victoria. Yeah, and, you know, we all get, as Ian said, you know, the moments in our lives... Mm can take us places as well and our reticular activity system whatever it was called here activating yeah yeah um takes us right back there right plus the hippocampus all working back to past moments of um yeah, yeah. and sometimes we do have to say you know beep right off absolutely uh, victoria. And I, if i'm if i may victoria i think mm. i wonder and i'm sorry i'm very pixelated it's my internet for some reason um <laughs> the the thing i'd say with that is that there might be a thought in your brain around allowing yourself to let that go in that i don't mean it in the kind of an easy way far from it it's more about 
in order to savor the man that you recognized and loved and admired, yeah. the brain might be trying to hang on to that and therefore you can't do the next bit. And yeah. actually, if, if we were to work together, I would be saying, okay, well, how can we sort of square that circle for you for a little bit? Because actually the reality is, you know, I suspect, and again, maybe I'm talking way out of turn and I appreciate it might be on dangerous ground here, but forgive me, please. It's about, mm. you know, the life that he would want you to live. Love that. Yeah, thank you. The life that he would want you to live. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Birdie. Uh, Laurie said an honest broker, very important. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Having Is that having then, a person that you can sort of t mm. test stuff mm. with? Is that? Mate, yeah, I think that was back down to the exter okay. externalizing stuff with people who are around yeah. you that you trust. Yeah, spot on, Laurie. Mm. Completely agree. If we're wrong with that, let us know. <laughs> Cecile said, yes, finding the right therapist is vital because it can reinforce low self-esteem. Otherwise, take time to find the right external help. Yeah. And then she also said that uh, stigmatization can be a toxic stressor or seed, oh, not yeah. feed. Not seed. feed. <laughs> yeah. And again, this reminds me of a story, to, you know, the, the feeding of the two wolves. You know, there's limiting belief or imposter syndrome <laughs> yeah. and, and there's positive wolf, you know. And um, so, you know, these two wolves fight during our whole lives, limiting belief and positive belief. And they continue to fight throughout our lives. And the question to ask is, well, which one wins? Well, which one wins is the one that we feed, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And recognise that I think there's a key point in that, if I may pick up as well, which is it's about balance. Yeah. So if imposterism mm -hmm. is the way in which our brain is trying to keep us safe, although Claire Huzo would say, who's done a lot of work on imposterism, would say it's the single biggest thing that actually slows us from success because it means we'll always play safe. Yeah, But if you think about it, imposterism is there on the scale. And again, Andrew, you've come across a scale recently, which yeah, I think backs just to find which it. is Here we go. Let's just do saying this. that Here actually, bottom, yeah, so bottom diagram, folks. Absolutely. So if you think about it, it's part of the scale. So part of the reason that we have imposterism in the thoughts is our brain trying to keep us safe from yeah. doing something really radically mm. stupid, basically, or really silly or life threatening. Mm. The problem is, is when it gets overactivated. So the key thing like with the two walls, it's about that balance. It's about that equilibrium. Yeah. What's the one I'm feeding? Well, actually recognizing here, this is may not be as completely escaping from the imposterism per se. It, you know, you may still have moments, but the key thing is more often than not, it's the more positive self-talk that will win out because that's the one that we're feeding. Yeah. And interesting. I love this scale here, you know, that I actually, you know, it links to confidence, uh, you know, and, and maybe that's something you can help us with. Ian. you know, what is the link to we talked about mental health and mental well-being? You know, what's the link to self-confidence? Because here's this is an interesting scale yeah. because. We can either have no confidence because we're fear led and we we get paranoid, you know. And on the other side, if we're uber confident, things go wrong as well, right? The ball goes in the water, Absolutely. you know. Absolutely. You know, when we're playing Absolutely. golf or whatever. So actually, that imposter syndrome, in some ways, isn't a bad self check measure just to put us back into the right place in our confidence levels. Absolutely. Say you, Ian. Absolutely. So I'm going to go back to a couple of other things that have been mentioned already in the chat. So one of the ones, yeah. I think one of the comments, which was brilliant about excitement and fear, yeah. actually working with various sort of Olympians, Paralympians mm -hmm. in the past, you know, one of the things I know is that they'll say, well, actually, there's a little bit of a way of reframing fear in particular. So the yeah. anxiety, well, what it's is? excitement. Yeah. So if you listen to, and they, and they actually got me looking at this, if you ever look at um, playbacks of or watch interviews of, of sports persons who have been doing different things and they get interviewed and then somebody said and they'll usually there'll be somebody said well were you scared or were you nervous were you ever worried about it and usually they turn that to very deliberately because it's part of their way in which their brain's doing it already which is no i was excited it was yeah. excited i was excited to represent so there's i think there's something about them. physiologically they're very 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 similar, very similar quite... indeed yeah yeah absolutely they're very so hard to tell apart so they? that's part it so again if you are having that sort of anxiety feeling that's not necessarily a bad thing it could be excitement yeah and the key again is where your attention goes are you seeing the attention of, of that or i must be therefore scared therefore i must be something wrong therefore i'm a fraud blah blah blah, blah and you disappear down that rabbit hole or are you yeah. saying actually i'm feeling quite excited about this you know the opportunities this might pr present and actually yeah having that excitement and those feelings that's 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 going to be a positive thing for me yeah yeah and paul's just come back actually um about the peter principle promoted hmm. beyond ability there we go 
Ah, ah that right. deserves one of those. Hang on. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Paul. So, nice. so I hearing Dunning Kruger here. Yeah, Dunning Kruger effect. Yeah. In other words, uh, it all yeah. looks too easy, but actually, it's not easy, is it? Yeah. So the Dunning, I, I like that. Beyond b- yeah. being promoted beyond ability, and this I think is sometimes again with smart intelligent people we go actually i get that so dunning kruger the idea is that you get a little bit of ability and therefore you overrate your ability to do something and over yeah. a period of time you actually realize that you didn't really know what you were doing <laughs> who's just luck that actually, got you there <laughs> yeah no exactly and you sort of have this dip in confidence and then you get this higher confidence uh, over yeah. a long as your learning of time. progresses and the evidence comes right yeah i like that absolutely so, and that that's but, interesting so we go up because we think this is easy then we realize it's not easy so we crash and burn and then we start to modulate back to a normal sort of process, right? As we and learn. what's what's changed there, Andrew? If we've made more mistakes, yeah, and there's evidence of you know learning along the way through mistakes and failures, right? Oh, I like it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the problem is, yeah. in our brain, we're thinking, oh no, we're going to be found out at any point. <laughs> get the, the blood. The men in black will come and get you, Ian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, but the sad part is that we say this to ourselves and we actually see this when we we inadvertently see this in our organizations and, and the what you know the roles that we're having as leaders because if we're not careful people are are thinking yeah i'm actually i've been promoted beyond my ability i don't feel yeah. like i'm in control well that's guys that's fine that's normal that's yeah. what we should be saying yeah. that's absolutely normal now what are we going to do about it yeah, so yeah we're never the fully that. sorted person right we're never exactly. ready exactly yeah exactly we're never ready yeah and actually that. laurie's got a brilliant response to this mm. what if i fail but darling what if you fly now why don't we think about flying instead of falling right but i suppose it's quite natural if we jump off a mm. building we're going to fall right but but yeah. nevertheless, I get that. <laughs> Just health and safety tip here. I would suggest that. <laughs> yeah. But I love the analogy. I love all the metaphor. You know, yeah, I love that. Thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. On. Back to you, Birdie. Give you a break here. Uh, Jonah said one thing that helped me was the exercise of looking into the future. If I did yeah. not do it, how are you going to feel in five, 10, 20 years if you don't do whatever you want to do? Spot on, you know, yeah, I completely agree with that. Someone that I know is going through a breakup at the moment and, you know, one of the things they did was look into the future and think, okay, mm. so what is it like, you know, I'm 24 now, what happens when I'm tw- when I'm 30, you know, if I've still got the same relationship, mm. you know, so actually I need to do something about it now. Spot on, Jonas, look into the future and see what it will be like or not if you don't act. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Yes. Can I, there's a, a lovely quote recently I came across, which is there's only two people that you have to impress in life two people and they're not your yeah. spouse or somebody that you know and well, not your mum <laughs> not your mum even it's your eight-year-old self and your eight eight-year-old self oh so impressive right so yeah i like that so you've got to even though your eight-year-old is gone right if you're an adult you can still impress it right yeah i mean would I, can i can i looking back mm. have i had the bravery oh, and the God. openness to embrace the world mm that I would have wanted as an eight year old to be seen, but at the same time as an 88 year old, you know, will I be able to say to my 88 year old self that I actually did, you know, again, it's, it's part of it's about bravery about, but again, it's, it's the thing that's liberating about this is, and it is liberating rather than it being a sort of a stick. And again, that can be two sides of a coin that the brain struggles to see, but, I would, but honestly, you know, I, I love that. And I, and I don't, I don't even know who it was that, had that Beautiful. quote and I, I wish i did but i really really like it so thank you whoever it was <laughs> yeah, whoever you were thank you very much yeah russell says here's the book link so you can find it in the chat folks for the atomic yeah. habits yeah brilliant Birdine, carry on for us right uh victoria said hypnotherapy gives you choice yeah. i like having a word with myself oh talk to yourself absolutely but yeah. talk to yourself nicely that's what yes. hypnotherapy does is allow you to talk to yourself mm. nicely beautiful yes. Yeah, I like that. Thanks, Victoria. Okay, Cecile said, having a great coach is great. It is a nice steering gear or wheel. There are professionals at all level and direction for everyone's need. Yeah, spot on. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Cecile. Very well done. Yes. Uh, Tim said, the more you know, the more you realize there is to learn. Maybe this is a key driver of imposter syndrome. Experts know the gaps in their knowledge and focus on them. Yeah, interesting. And the more you look, the more you find, right? So, um, yeah. Yes. Love that. Yeah, nice one, Tim. 
And Tim, on that, if I may, because this is Andrew, this is something I owe to you. Mm. I to the power of we. Oh, so, lovely. Yeah. So there's this, yes. a really lovely diagram that Matthew Whitaker has got on the internet, which again, if maybe you can make it available somehow, Andrew, through the, the links. The but magic of the internet. The magic of the internet. But it's the thing about what everybody else, the idea is that what everybody else knows is like this massive circle. And what I know is this little <laughs> circle inside yeah. that. And the reality is that's not the case. That's the reality is this, and it's more like a petal diagram. You get this overlap of you know, what other people know, uh, what I know. Like a Venn diagram. And that's the point here, right, people? Mm. I don't. I think we're social creatures. We're not meant, developed, evolved, whatever you want to call it, to be in isolation. Mm. So even as a leader, well, particularly as a leader, possibly, you know, you're supposed to be with other people, so to help, help other people to 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 do what and become the thing that they need to become, or you need them to become together. Yeah. And then there's leaders. Which it's not about you having all the answers mm. either. So actually, it's about you enabling the team and you as those leaders working together. So this this lie that the brain says is to be the best leader, you need to know everything. The guy, um, yeah. So um, David Marquette talks about it's a fantastic book called the, the turn the ship around which again oh, a yes. colleague of ours, yeah, yeah. So it's recommended david bramble and we talk about you know he's ex-military himself and one of the things about the turn the ship around david marquette is just saying you know the idea is that it's what we do together and yeah. as leaders our job is not to be the super duper person and the expert because that way we create leader followers what we should be creating is leader leaders leader so leaders. That leader leader middles because mm. actually if i creating another leader then they create another leader and then i and then that i evolve yeah i like that. everybody wins yeah, love that. And just on that, yeah, just a quick poll on some data. I did this the other day. LinkedIn's brilliant for this. You can just do quick polls. So this is some data I, I just gathered. So imposter syndrome or imposterism describes the fear of being a fraud or being found out? Question mark. So how often do you experience such angst? And we asked the same question of you guys, right? But this is what came back from um, the wibbly wobbly um, uh, web, which was um, this data here, which is quite interesting, actually. So often 16%, sometimes 28%, occasionally 24 The one we want to challenge is not at all or rarely 32%. You mm. know, is that where the big lie comes in, Ian, do you think? Well, that's I'm, I'm honestly open. I'm really open. Mm. So one of the things that I've done, I did a talk the other day at a big conference on imposter syndrome and posturism. Yeah. And one of the things I sort of said, the brains really struggle sometimes mm. to see two things at the once. So I put this whole thing about um, a, an optical illusion. It's the classic, I think other people know it's the, my wife and my, my, my mother-in-law, basically. It's the sort of 1915 old... What we, it's, you know, you two know women. One, Andrew. Yeah, two yeah. women, yeah. So yeah. you can see. And what I was saying is actually that people can't, generally can't see both at the same time mm. now there are some neurodivergent people that are having conversations with them that can so i'm honestly i'm open to people saying if they don't feel it rather than i don't want to call you a liar <laughs> I, just, I, I know i said to use that quote about mark twain but i'm really interested you know if that is the case i, I, I wonder what's going on fascinating yeah well that still corroborates about 68 percent have i got that math right yeah 68 percent would feel that wouldn't they yeah so which is about still... spot on with the with, with, with the, the research, research yes yeah. yes lovely okay birdie back to you okay so elaine said i'm studying the positive intelligence model which is providing me with new language to explain to others why imposterism is valid to acknowledge yet we shouldn't stay there yeah acknowledge it and then move on yeah and that's a smart move, isn't it? You know, because actually we acknowledge where we're at, but that doesn't mean we have to stay there, right? We can go, oh, that's where I'm absolutely. at, right? Where do I need to go to next, right? Mm -hmm. And Elaine, you've just hit on something, which so when yes. a can't absolutely, it's own the imposter. How do you own the yeah. imposter? Own well, the imposter. Own, positive, yeah. own the positive intent of the imposter. Mm. Because usually that's, the driver is a very positive intent, you know? To keep you safe. So, right? you know, yeah, perfection's high standards, you know, it's valuing people if you're a superhero, you know, it's... Um, it's an autonomy or focus necessarily if you're you know the soloist the, the yeah. experts knowledge is power mm -hmm. you know there is there are some real i mean these are the, the words that i use and again please i'll be fascinated what other people think that could be and what's the positive intent of the archetype because mm -hmm. when you work out what that is actually you can see actually the imposter far from being something that's d destructive can be constructive if we're looking at it in the right way yeah love that love that yeah, thank you. So look, we're 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 heading towards um, our our time to finish shortly. We've got a few minutes yet. Birdin, just rattle us through the comments, and then um, we can move to elsewhere. Uh, okay. So Cecile just said, Andrew, I love the idea of the top and bottom workout. Um, 
Yeah. And Maria said, I have reframed fear in show jumping to excitement. I completed yeah, a fear on. program after a tricky experience with a horse. Yeah. You know, and you're constantly wow. having to challenge yourself to jump new heights. And Maria's a superstar in that. So, yeah, having oh, to face Maria, that's all, amazing. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And your horse would know, right? So uh, this is the other thing. So you need to know at a yes. deep level for Maria. Yeah, it's not just you. It's the horse as well. No, right? no. So, yeah. Well, they're yeah. going to pick up on all sorts of things. So that training that you've done mm. is, is going to be fascinating. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Uh, Linda said she needs to leave, but she okay. said thanks. Great. See ya. <laughs> nice. Bye, nice Linda. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon, Linda. Oh, there. See you soon. Yeah. Laurie said the Peter principle is more related to people that are actually promoted beyond their ability. If you have ever had a boss that you think who ties your shoes in the morning. That is the Peter Principle. Oh, um, uh, yeah. That's really hard to tie someone else's shoes as well. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Laurie. So I guess, I guess with uh, that, I think um, it's how we see it, right? So we're worried mm. that if that's happened yes. um, and I feel an impo- Yeah, so I, I need to work on that. That sounds... Well, thank you for introducing me to that. Yeah, Sorry, that's Birdie. good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, carry on, Birdie. No. Um, then Victoria came back. She said, I totally understand. It's because he died whilst leading a documentary commissioned by National Geographic on the Britannic, so the Titanic sister ship, oh. and is still being recognized even now with awards, which is truly honorable, and I will always honor him. Yeah. But I need to shine my own lights. I lost my flying career due to his passing because I had or have two bereaved children. So now I have chosen to help people to overcome their fear of flying. Does yeah. that make sense? I'm choosing to do something with what I love and love I can that. fly. Yeah. One life. Life is precious. Waste time wisely. You matter. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Victoria. And, you know, that's making the best of a situation that we're in, isn't it? And, you know, uh, dealing the cards that we've dealt with and then playing them accordingly. Fantastic. Absolutely. Well done, Victoria. And more than that, that, I think, I think if I may, there's the, again, one of my favorite quotes, you know, that I love quotes, Andrew, is that, you mm. know, there's the C.S. Lewis said, no, no, unfortunately said no man, because it was the fifties, but no person with, you know, an opinion can take away from a person with experience. What, what you're showing, what people connect when we understand the, the, and can share the experience again with social creatures, we recognize that yeah. so Victoria, honestly, massive love. And thank you. Thank you on behalf of all the people that you are going to be helping as a result of that. You know, it's through that pain that actually that means you can connect with people in a much yeah. deeper way. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant. There's a few more comments that we'll come on to right at the very end if we've got time. So um, yes. very briefly, just Ian, so thank you so much. I mean, we could just talk forever, you know, and we've got a much better idea of the ups and downs of imposterism and you know what it means for us and what the opposite of that is and, you know, what's better. And thank you for just a fantastic session mate absolutely brilliant thank you um in terms of getting hold of you uh, dr ian price is a neurologist a trainer a speaker and an executive coach who helps high performing individuals and teams reframe and recapture um confidence and control in their life and ambitions wow that's fantastic and you can get hold of ian here we'll put these in the links um shortly as well so ian's profile uh you can get hold of ian on ian at thinkitout.co.uk and his twitter handle is dr ian price and um and his website is thinkitout.co.uk ian i think thank you it's a pleasure i would also say that i stand on the shoulder of giants here because i'm Mm. the director of that think it out and it's our founding director but honestly linda's one of the team here david bramble we've got people that have been anna who's a paralympic downhill skier we've got ex-british diplomat and there's a whole host of people and again this goes back to the thing about victoria you know one of the things i realized was that actually when we're talking with leaders experience is important so I, I can help with the unlocking part of the brain to understand how the brain works and how people communicate and how the brain communicates with itself and other people. But that experience, so thinking out is more than just me. That's what I'd just like to say. And yeah. I, I'm really, really grateful those people are part of it. Yeah, thanks for that, Ian. And we do work from time to time as well, don't we? We so, do. Uh, yeah, we do. Yeah, lovely. Okay, thank you for that. So um, thanks again, Ian, for enlightening us today. Uh, we've loved having you on the show and this show will be on podcast shortly too, people. So please um, also join in our LinkedIn Leaders Live group. The link will be in the chat very shortly. 
uh, as well as keep the conversation going over there. So, and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. That'd be really helpful. Uh, we've had all the comments, um, well, all the links in the comments, uh, and we'll continue to. Uh, before I get on to what's next week, folks, quick word on what's the purpose and why to Leaders Live. And it all starts with an idea and a passion that you, me, you, all of us, we are more than we think. And um, it's also about building a community of like-minded folks. And this is particularly relevant to building back better business and people following the last two years. And our motto, as Ian has said, is I to the power of we. So Leaders Live is a freely available, entertaining expression of this, and anyone can join in as you found out to take part in extraordinary conversations that we've just had today. And through these simple ideas, we, main, we aim to make a difference and make the world better too, folks, one, you know, one community at a time. And we love the idea of wanting to bring a spirit of freedom, of joy and fun and a feel-good factor to our working lives. What's not to like about that, folks? So quick um, CTA on what I do, um, just commercially, I speak and host events. So um, if you're ever looking for uh, events to be hosted and to have keynote speakers, I do that. I facilitate top teams uh, for strategic processes and strategy planning days. I develop high performing teams, which is the bulk of what I do. And I'm a fully qualified executive coach. And I also co-founded a thing called Inspired CEOs. And if you are a CEO of a small to medium sized enterprise, and we help you um, to grow your business um, through growing you from the inside out. So those are just little things about what I do. And in terms of the goosh for next week, folks, we our next show is on Tuesday, the the 31st of May. Is that right? At 8.45 a.m. UK time. And I'll be hanging out with another mate of mine, XFD uh, Nikki Wild, now successful business owner, about de-stressing directors to make business positive, productive and profitable. And we'll be wow. chatting about the great resignation. Yay. And is your career stuck in a rut? Ooh. Ooh. So that's what we'll be covering then. So, um, uh, and what do we mean by about life and career changes and keep going? You know, and we don't want to keep going around the same hamster wheel, do we? And so we'll be talking about all of that stuff, particularly relevant after the last two years we've had. And what does it mean for us as leaders? So um, the Get to Know You in Five slot will be back uh, next week as well. It was supposed to be this week, but Mateus wasn't available this week. So we're going to have Mateus on next week, just on the Get to Know You in Five slot. We can't wait. So be there or be square, folks. So we're going to wrap up with um, some boppy music, if I can find it. So uh, it's been great to hang out with you today, uh, folks. Thanks very much for being part of this show and creating such a fantastic community um, and a great vibe. We can't do this without you folks. Just turn down the volume just a little bit. And uh, the podcast will be available shortly too. And in the meantime, it's a wrap, 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 folks. So from Ian, Birdin, me, we wish you a great week ahead. Cheers for that. So we'll be clearing up this confetti for ages. <laughs> Cheers now. Bye-bye. Okay, well, See you again. Thanks, Birdin. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, everybody. Tarara bit. Stay on the line for a moment, Ian. Fantastic. I will.